Creating lesson plans can be a headache for a lot of teachers. When I started teaching years ago, this is where I struggled the most. I enjoyed making lessons, but when it came to organizing those lessons, I was a mess. Now I can plan out a whole curriculum in a matter of hours. In this video, I'll show you how you can save hours every week planning your lessons using Notion. Okay, to start, let me show you what I use to plan lessons. This is my lesson planner that I have built, and it's actually pretty straightforward how it works. There are only two databases. There is a database for lesson units, and then a database for all of the lessons. Uh, let's take a look at the lesson units first. These essentially act as uh, folders that can group lessons uh, together. So let's take a look inside one of them. If I click in in class essay, we can see we have a few essay lessons inside here. So if you have multiple classes each week, each with different lesson material, well, that's a lot of lessons, especially over the course of a few months. And so this is where the folders can help keep things organized. Now they could be for a general subject or a folder for a single specific class. Personally, I like making mine related to subjects. So if we take a look at my example here, uh, I have a folder for in-class essays, uh, some filler lessons, vocabulary tests, uh, things like that. Now, lesson folders do help with uh, organizing many different lessons, but the true benefit uh, for these folders is when you start using uh, lesson templates. So let me show you what I mean by this. Let's open up our in-class essay uh, topic folder here, and we're going to open it up. Now, Notion has a function to create templates or essentially pre-made uh, pages for individual databases. And so let me show you here. If I come to the lessons database here and I click on this blue arrow, you can see now I can view all of the templates uh, for the lessons database. So in this example here, let's maybe zoom in a bit. We can see in class, uh, essay, reading book, filler lessons, uh, listening practice. I mean, you can make a template for any kind of lesson you have. So let's take a look at this in-class essay template and let me show you kind of what I mean. So if we click into the template here and click on edit, this is how I have set up my template for this specific lesson. So for context, I teach uh, here in South Korea uh, English uh, to young students. So one of my classes, I have a low level uh, elementary class, they're around 11, 12 years old, and every two weeks we have to do uh, an in-class essay together. So what I have done setting up this essay template is that, well, I have connected the unit to in-class essay, and then I have also included a URL to the uh, Google Drive where I keep all of my uh, shared essays. If I click on the link here, you can see this takes me to the folder with all of my in-class essays. At the beginning of class, I would open up one of these on my computer, and then we would go through uh, the essay together with the students. So having this link here always uh, in this template, whenever I create an essay lesson, I'm always able to view the Google Drive with all of my documents very quickly. If we continue going down, we can see that I've also tagged my two classes. Uh, so these are the low-level elementary classes in which I have to teach uh, the essay to. And then lastly, I have a saved uh, ChatGPT essay prompt that I like to use. This is, uh, I made this way, way earlier, and this is where I can type in my essay topic, grade level, whatever, and then this helps me uh, create a brainstorm for the essay very quickly. And so whenever I create a new essay lesson, uh, I'll have this available uh, just immediately. So on top of having custom templates, we can also set a default template for this unit. So if I click on uh, the arrow here again, and we have in-class essay, I can click on the three dots, and instead of hitting edit this time, I can click as set as default. If I click on only on all view, it will set the default template in this lesson unit folder to this essay lesson. So let's click on this here. And so now every single time I create a new lesson, it will apply this template. So we can see here, if I open this up, we can see my classes are tagged, my Google Drive is available, and I have my ChatGPT essay prompt here. And so this makes uh, lesson planning for specific units uh, really, really, really fast. 
So you could imagine inside all of your lesson units, you could apply a different lesson template, each with different resources, links, files, tagged to different classes, whatever you need. And then whenever you quickly create a lesson inside that unit, you have all of your files ready to go. Okay, let's now take a look at the lessons database. So it may seem a little kind of confusing here, but it's actually quite simple how it works. If we zoom in a little bit here, we only have a few properties. We have a status property. Obviously, we have the name. We can set the date. Uh, this is just telling us which week we are in in the, uh, in the year. I find personally this is helpful than just kind of looking at a date sometime. Uh, we also have the lesson unit, which are up here. And then we have all of our classes that the lesson is tagged to. Now, one particular property that is especially helpful for lesson planning is this status property. So if we click on the status property, we can see we have not started preparing, ready, and archive. And so what the status property is used for is that it tells you which lessons you have prepared materials for and which lessons are not yet ready to teach. So if you have many different classes, many lessons, and lots of things to prepare, this can help you kind of stay organized and let you know which lessons you have prepared materials for and which lessons you still need to prepare. As we can see in this example, we have a few lessons that are ready to teach and then a few lessons that we still need to kind of prepare our materials for. Now inside the status property, we also have a status for archive. When you are finished teaching a lesson, you can uh, change the lesson status to archive and this will hide the lesson from view, keeping your workspace more clean. However, it will send it to this archive folder uh, where you can reuse lessons for later. And I find this can be really helpful, especially if you have a really good lesson that you might want to teach later, or you don't want to just delete lesson material uh, and you want to you want to save everything. So you can see here we have the archive folder organized uh, by lesson units. I find this is also a really convenient way of organizing previous lessons. Okay, so let's now do a demonstration on how this might work in practice. Let's say that I have a reading book that I would like to cover with my students. Maybe I want to read a chapter every single week at the beginning of the week. Let's say for this example, there are just eight chapters in the book, so we'll read one chapter every week at the beginning of the week with my students. Well, let's set this up. Okay, to begin, I'm gonna create the lesson unit folder. So let's click on new here, and this will pull up a new lesson unit folder page. We're gonna give it the title reading book, and then we can give it a template, maybe the brown one, and let's full page this here so we can get a better view. Okay. Our lesson unit page has now been created, so let's now begin by creating the lesson uh, template. So we're gonna click on the blue arrow here, we'll click on new template, and we will call this reading book chapter. Okay, let's now set the necessary properties. So we're gonna click on unit. We want to make sure that this lesson is tagged to the correct unit. We'll click on reading book, there we go. Now, for files and URL, this is completely up to you, uh, but for this demonstration, let's say that I have a worksheet that I would like to give to my students. Well, maybe I can attach uh, a simple worksheet to this lesson template here. And let's say this is our reading book questions. Now, URL, so similar to the uh, in-class essay example I showed you, maybe we have a folder for all of our reading book resources that we'd like access to. So I can come back to the URL here and paste in our Google Drive uh, link here. Now let's add in some classes. Let's add in our low-level uh, elementary classes. So I'll select these two here. I selected two since I teach this class uh, twice, on once on Monday and once on Tuesday with different students. If we would like, we can then add in some page content. Uh, for this example, let's add in some general discussion questions that I could use with my students about the book after we finish the chapter. And for this, I'm gonna use the help of Notion AI. So let's say, uh, give me a list of general discussion questions I could 
use with my students after reading a chapter in a book. Okay, there we go. We have a list of general discussion questions, and that's about it for our template. Let's just add in a quick icon here. Icon, we'll add in a book, maybe brown, there we go, to match the lesson unit, and we'll come back here. The next thing we'll do is set the default template to this lesson view inside our unit. So we'll click on the arrow here, go down to reading book, we'll click on set as default, and we won't click on for all views, we'll just click on only the all view here in this lesson unit. Okay, wonderful. Now every time we create a new lesson here, it'll apply uh, this template, which will have all of our resources in there. So if I open this up, I can see that my files are here, my URLs here, it's linked to my classes, and I have my general discussion questions uh, ready to go. Now earlier I said uh, we're going to have eight chapters in this book, one chapter every week, which means we need eight different lessons. And so I can click on this button eight different times. There we go, we have eight lessons, and now let's just adjust the names here. Okay, and there we have it. We have eight lessons, uh, each titled a different chapter, and they all have the template applied. The last thing we can do is now set the date. So I can, what I can do is manually select the date uh, for each of these, uh, which you can do. It is a little slow. One thing I like to do, uh, which is a little faster, is to just give all of them the same date and then go back to our main lesson page. If we scroll down here, we see that we have our lessons list, but we also have a calendar view. And I find the calendar view is, well, one, it's good at getting a bird's eye view of all of our lessons, but two, it also allows us to drag and drop lessons uh, really quickly, which can speed up kind of your planning. So we can see that all of our lesson units are kind of showing up here, and now we can drag and drop them uh, where we would like. Now I can begin by just dragging these wherever I'd like. Maybe we'll drag these all down here. Let's move the calendar. There we go. And then I can move these around, drag them how I would like. And I find just doing this is just a bit faster than selecting the date manually. Uh, once you get comfortable drag and dropping uh, lessons around, uh, eventually it becomes pretty intuitive and just much, much faster. Okay, and there we go. We have all of our reading book uh, lessons uh, set. Let's come back to our reading book unit here. We'll open this up again. And now we can see all of our eight lessons are here. Uh, all of the dates are applied and all of the classes are applied. Now you could begin by preparing for these lessons and then changing the status property as you go. Uh, and that's about it. Now, one last thing I'll show you is how we can easily view these lessons. Uh, and this is by coming to the classes page. Now the classes page is not available in the free lesson planner. It is available in the complete teacher system, the ultimate teacher planner. But if we come down to our classes here, we can click on class. And now we can see that our reading book chapter will show up for this week. And as every single week goes on, our new uh, reading book chapter lesson will show up here. We can also see our in-class essay. And then if we come to the class page, we can easily just click on our lesson and have everything available uh, to teach. And so by having a simple two database system with the lesson units and the lessons, the page templates, uh, the status property, and a few different lesson views, you can create an extremely efficient lesson planning workspace. This is the same system I use to manage 12 classes with over 100 students and just countless lessons each week. If you would like access to the template I demonstrated in this video, you can check out the two links in the description down below.